Hey guys, welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about this little circuit board that I designed. Um, it is called the ISO mod. It's a isolated um, serial adapter, so it's a TTL serial. Um, we have both uh, isolation on the comm and the power. We can turn on and off the power supply to level shift. Yeah, and today's video is sponsored by JLCPCB, who I always use for any of my circuit board that I get made. Uh, and sometimes I'll even use the assembly service like in this video. So uh, this one, we got a turnkey circuit board directly from JLCPCB. Uh, I designed it in Easy EDA and uh, just got it shipped here. So super convenient. And uh, yeah, let's, let's uh, first take a minute to talk about the sponsor and then we can take a look at this uh, little module. Okay, JLCPCB is nothing new to you guys. They've been sponsoring the channel for a while now but uh, they actually do have some different promotions going on right now. All of the uh, multi-layer boards are $2 at the moment, and uh, they also have a special going on the new um, uh, multi-color PCBs, which is something I definitely want to try out. I think it'd be a lot of fun to do a kind of colorful circuit board. So yeah, uh, definitely check out our sponsor, JLC P PCB, and big thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. Okay, well, before I lose your interest in this, because it's just a USB to serial, uh, let's talk about what's the point of it. The point of it is to be a modular uh, system, so that way we can put a 485 adapter on there, or uh, 422, or RS-232, or your logic level um, serial, the UART, uh, with your microcontroller. So you can turn on and off the output to this uh, of this uh, isolated power supply here. If you need to run it at 3.3 volts or something, you would turn it off and use the 3.3 volts that's coming from your system. Oh, you can turn it on and use it at five volts just because five volts is a common logic level. It's um, what I'd be using for the uh, 485 or uh, 422 or um, 232 module that'll go on top. So yeah, uh, it's made to have this kind of common footprint to most of the projects that I do. And uh, you just slide a different module on top to get a different uh, communication protocol out of it. So yeah, as it sits, uh, this is kind of the base, the bottom of the the, the whole project. And then uh, we'll do some more boards in the future for it that uh, sit on top and can uh, do other uh, projects. I didn't think about varying the power at the time. I may actually do uh, a rev B of this before I do the modules that sit on top. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm happy with the way this thing looks. Let's uh, actually hook it up, take a, uh, take a look at it, and um, make sure that these things actually work, because I didn't assemble them. Uh, JLC PCB did, and uh, we got some really small components on here. Uh, U4 is uh, TVS protection across it. Those are some pretty small pads, and the, um, the USB to uh, UART uh, from FTDI is a uh, leadless carrier trip those can be pretty tr tricky to install as well. You might find yourself asking, what's the point of this? Uh, well, like, why do I want an isolated serial adapter? And, you know, they do sell these. They're just a little bit pricey. Well, what's the point of this project versus just using one of these, which are cheap and plentiful on Amazon and eBay? And, well, the point of it is the isolation and the protections on it to protect your computer. You know, projects like this, we have uh, five volts and 12 volts right next to each other. And if I get the pin wrong, I can put uh, 12 volts right onto the um, USB and damage my computer. And uh, it's, you know, a whole lot cheaper to throw out something like this if you break it than to replace your entire computer because you damaged the uh, USB controller inside it. You know, uh, damaged motherboard never fun to have. And a lot of these automotive projects I do on the channel, you know, we have 12 volts, which really isn't even a clean 12 volts. It, it's from a car, so it can be 
all the way up to 16 volts with uh, plus spikes uh, from transients on there. So you really want to protect your computer from, from those kind of things coming back and damaging it. So that's, that's the point of this. And then it's also modular so we can uh, do more than just TTL logic with it. All right, so for our first test here, we are going to test the isolation barrier. We're going to be doing a DC isolation test at 1000 volts or 1 kV. Uh, that's just the highest this mega will do. Uh, I'm pretty confident it'll pass that because the power supply is rated to 1500 volts and the isolation I see here, the communication chip, uh, he's good to uh, 2500 volts. So um, I'm pretty confident we'll pass this. And uh, so what we have here is a USB connection where everything's shorted and then we have our output side here where everything is shorted as well. So we are testing both our power supply and our comm chip at the same time. Okay, so we are connected across there. This, this wire actually is only rated to 600 volts, so try not to touch it and go ahead and isolate it. And so, yep, you can see we go, we pretty much instantly shoot up into the gig ohms. So we have uh, a, a nice isolation there. And again, just to show that it's working, I'm gonna go ahead and put it down 50 volts. So yeah, dead short. So uh, yeah, so it uh, passes isolation. Right, so let's uh, hook this thing up to the computer, make sure it shows up as a serial device. Uh, then open up putty, just do a loop back with it, verify that the switch turns off power, turn it back on, verify that we have communication, and then we'll take a look at the schematic. And, you know, it may seem redundant to check these things, but really in your design verification, even if you looked at the schematic and you know it's right, you should still just go ahead and check and make sure, make sure your isolation's good, make sure your communication's good, and make sure that your logic actually works the way it is. So it's just a good design practice to check everything, even if you look at the schematic and go, I know this is working. Okay, so let's uh, test this thing out. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is make sure it shows up as a COM port. All right, so COM 17, so it, it did show up. And then uh, let's connect to it. Uh, for the terminal, we'll uh, force off uh, echo just to uh, make sure it's not, we're not seeing our own echo here. And also we have for the test is the TX and RX looped back together. So let's open that. And we should not see anything because the power supply is off. So let's check that. Yep, no, uh, no communication on the side of it because there's no power to it. The, the VCC is not powered. So let's turn that on. And now we should see whatever character we type. So yeah, it's, it's working. So we, we know uh, it can talk to itself at least. So the loopback worked on it. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the schematic. Try not to spend too much time here, but uh, let's uh, get a better understanding of what's going on. Uh, if you read it kind of from here to, to there, you got uh, input over here, you get your USB. Um, and then the communications chip, and then we have our quad isolation I see here, and it's a quad digital isolation, and then a DC-DC converter and a um, uh, TVS protection or ESD protection for uh, this side over here. Um, so yeah, this DC-DC is five volts in, five volts out, um, and he's isolated to 1500 volts. Uh, this guy's isolated to 2,500 volts from its UL listing, but it's really rated a little higher than that. Um, our absolute maximum on our power pins here is like seven volts. And uh, this guy's gonna clamp right at 6.8 volts. So uh, maybe a little lower, maybe closer to seven. So uh, yep, yeah, we, we should be protected here. We got the TVS protection as close as possible to the uh, pins on here. And yeah, it's it's really not some groundbreaking design here. Just 
pretty simple stuff following the, the data sheet on this guy that tells us we need 4.7 microfarads of capacitance on either side of them. And then also, um, you know, one, of the, one of the other recommendations on there is to have uh, some inductors for the EMI on it. Um, to, to kind of filter that out. I, I did not do that. Notice is uh, these two ground pins are actually the, the shield pins. They're not connected to ground. Uh, I did that intentionally because there's a, a little more consideration that goes into that than just connecting it to ground. Um, so yeah, uh, we got, uh, that's the schematic. Nothing, nothing crazy going on. And then in our PCB, uh, we'll, we'll see that uh, there's a couple of things we could have done better. Um, one of the things is we could have peeled back the copper uh, from these standoffs, um, but we can just make sure that our standoffs on the for, or the other side, the hat that goes on here, um, just goes ahead and has that peeled back. So then it won't be a problem. Um, or we can use plastic standoffs. So there's two ways to overcome that. Uh, another kind of like not necessarily best practice here is the the way this air gap is that, that they're just two like straight lines like that. Uh, that can actually be pretty bad for EMI. Um, you generally would want to like have it on one layer here and another layer there and kind of, you know, overlap them, but on separate layers. Um, that 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 helps a lot with uh, the EMI there. Um, but again, this is in the hobby space. We don't need, uh, you know, EMI to be perfect. Uh, another thing which I think I'm going to do and, you know, release a rev B of this is um, have an extra pin on this connector for the 5 volts, that the 5 volts is always there. And so, you know, the, the you basically move pin 1 up and run 5 volts to another pin. So that way we can, you know, turn off this switch and have a 3.3 volt regulator on the hat that then makes this 3.3 volts because uh, this particular... Um, IC does allow for level shifting from 5 volts to 3.3 volts. So uh, you can you can level shift with it. Uh, another thing is I like these FTDI chips, but I do know other people don't like them. Um, but I like the drivers. I like the way they work. Uh, but I do understand where somebody might desire a different chip, one that's maybe easier to solder onto the board or um, has a different driver. Uh, another thing we could have done, but uh, I'm really not too worried about, is is maybe a, a little bit more of a um, active current clamp instead of a, a fuse. Um, but uh, a f the, the fuse should, should protect your computer. Um, it's you know, not perfect in, in a short, they're not gonna instantly pop, but uh, hopefully this fuse would pop before the fuse on your, your motherboard pops. It's at least better than no fuse at all. Um, active current clamp could have been better, would have taken more active components to do um, and made the board a little bit larger. Uh, but I mean, you know, I probably could have fit it on here, to be honest. We have a lot of vacant space here. And, you know, as you can see, the bottom layer, there's pretty much nothing there. This is this is basically a one-layer board. I just used the second layer because JLC PCB doesn't charge you anything extra for it. So, yeah, I mean, there are there's room for improvement here, but I'm happy with the way this board came out. Well, I hope you guys found this to be an interesting project. I'm always looking for different things to do on the channel. I don't like just doing the same thing over and over again. So yeah, I, you know, took a crack at a USB device instead of something automotive. Um, yeah, and this should be pretty useful for any of your home projects. Putting one of these together probably costs about $25 um, if you order the stuff from China. Because um, I got five of them for, for 90 bucks. So, you know, do the math. Uh, it's somewhere close to 25 bucks to, to put them together. Um, obviously, price varies based on where you buy your components and um, and when you buy the components with uh, the way the price of components have really been fluctuating a lot lately. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's a, a cheap and easy project that, uh, you know, so for 25 bucks, you can protect your motherboard if you uh, build one of these yourself. I have uh, five of them. I'll probably uh, list a couple of them on eBay just to sell them and get rid of them. I'll probably actually take one of them apart and take this uh, DC DC off of it uh, and put it on a breadboard so that way I can push it to its limits and see, you know, 
how well this thing meets its uh, ratings, because it is incredibly cheap for one of these. Uh, the CUIs that are similar to this, uh, I think they even share a part number with CUI, um, are $8, and this thing is less than $2. Um, so, you know, he is just a dirt cheap isolated power supply. So I'm curious how close he really meets his ratings. Uh, you know, it's relatively close, at least in this case, because we tested it to a thousand volts, but he's rated to 1500. I would like to actually push it to 1500 and maybe a, a little bit beyond, maybe go up to 2000 and see if it fails. A lot of similar ones are rated 2000. So maybe in a future video, you'll see me uh, tear one of these apart, take the um, DC DC off and, and test it out. Cause yeah, I, I'm, I'm interested in how close he is on his, um, on his ripple, his line regulation, load regulation and uh, isolation. So we, we'll probably uh, check all of those in a future video. Cause I mean, that's just too cheap. Well, I hope you guys liked the video and I will uh, see you guys in the next one.